I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be demonstrating my fire brush pack for Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. My canvas is 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill the background layer with black. I'll use the keyboard shortcut of Shift F5 to just quickly fill with the foreground color. Let's start up at the top with broken fire. Now there's a few things you'll need to do in order to be able to use these brushes correctly. The first is pick a fire color, and you can choose a bright orange color, you can choose a reddish orange, you can choose a more yellow orange, and you can even have the color be more desaturated or darker if you want it to build up more slowly. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose an orange color like this. The next thing that we wanna do is change our brush mode from normal to color dodge, but you could also experiment with some of these other modes. You wanna make sure that you're painting on a dark background for a maximum effect. And if you're painting on layers that are above other layers and you want your fire to blend with the layers beneath, then you wanna change that layers blend mode to color dodge or perhaps one of the other blend modes. So I'll go ahead and just make sure it's set to normal for the blend mode. I'll do a test stroke with broken fire and you'll see that I get these broken clumps of fire. Now there's a couple of different things I can do here. One is I can kind of build up the fire into a clump like this. And if I use lighter pressure, I'm going to get lighter, thinner fire. If I press harder, then I'm going to get thicker fire. So I can get everything in between and I can have it kind of taper off if I want to. The other thing that I can do is I can build up strokes on top of themselves and the fire will start to get lighter and brighter and it'll start to kind of glow. And I can combine those two things so I can have fire that kind of tapers off like this and is more intense on the bottom. I even create kind of a fireball like this. And you could make explosions and all kinds of different things really easily. So this is just one look that you can get. The next brush is Burning Debris and this is kind of a supplemental brush because if we have a fire, it might be burning something and there might be debris. So if I choose kind of a warm grayish color like this, and I can have some debris kind of coming off of it, I'm just doing quick strokes. And I get these things that could be paper or pieces of wood or something. Now you can build those up on top of themselves as well if you wanna create highlights. Or if you wanted to, you could just select a warmer color and put in your highlights manually like that if you wanted to. The next brush is called Embers. I'm gonna select a color that's just a bit more red. I'll make it a bright orange. Now you could click with your mouse with this brush if you want a little bit more control to create individual embers like this if you wanted it to be something more subtle. And then of course you could take that broken fire brush or any of the fire brushes and have fire kind of coming off of that. I'll go back to the embers here. You can build up the embers on themselves so you can make them glow more. So you can see I can get a really nice glow there in the center. Let's take a look at the next brush, which is called Explosion. This is a pretty cool brush. You can just kind of tap in one place and build it up on itself. Just tap and tap over and over again. And you can get an explosion that looks different every time. It's pretty cool. You get a little bit of debris and smoke in there. The next brush is Fine Fire. Just to change it up, I'll choose kind of a more yellow orange. So this might be fire that's farther away, or it could just be broken up in a different way. But you could build it up like this. Maybe this is an explosion from something that crashed. You can of course scale these brushes larger or smaller. You could use the right bracket key to make this larger, and then the fire I get is going to be larger. But because this is fine fire, I want it to be on the smaller side. Moving on to the next brush, we have the fire brush. You can draw individual flames with it. So I'll just do kind of a wavy stroke like this. Build it up on itself a couple times. Do another kind of curved stroke like this and I can pull up some fire in kind of a direction. And I'll just do kind of a test stroke here, building it up on itself a couple times. Let's change the mode to linear dodge. We can build it up on itself. Let's try screen. Can build it up on itself. Builds up a little bit more slowly that way. Let's try soft light. And you can see you can get some different results here and different looks for your fire. So feel free to experiment with these different modes. We'll go ahead and set it back to color dodge. Let's try the next brush, which is fireball. I'm just gonna kind of tap and build up taps on top of themselves. And I can get these different fireball effects. You can even build up a big fireball like this. Have kind of an explosion looking thing. Now if I choose a color that's darker, and it's going to build up a bit more slowly. So that might work better for this particular brush. If 
I go even darker but still saturated, then it takes a really long time to build up. Perhaps too long, but you might get a really nice glowing smoke effect or something like that. If you make it too bright and too close to white, then it's just going to build up to white, and that might not be the effect that you want. So you do have to kind of fine tune the color to get the exact kind of look that you want, depending on the color you chose. You might also find that if your color is a bit too red, it might be difficult to build it up to that yellow color. You need to have more orange so that you can get kind of a blend between the orange and the yellow colors. Likewise, if it's too yellow, then it's not going to build up correctly either. The next brush that we'll take a look at is Fire Strokes. I'll go ahead and just select a bright orange like this. And I'll go ahead and do kind of an F, I, R, E. Now, if I go over that a few times, and I can create kind of strokes of fire. This is a really neat brush. And just like with the other fire brushes, if I build up the strokes on top of themselves, then they'll start to get lighter and lighter and start glowing. So I can just kind of scrub back and forth on this to brighten it up a bit. I could even pull little flames off of these so they're not completely perfect. It's a really, really spontaneous, nice brush. The next brush is called Forest Fire. This is an interesting brush. I'll just kind of do some dabs that overlap each other a little bit. I do want to leave some gap though, so I get kind of this branchy effect, like we're in the middle of a forest and there's a forest fire going on. So you could use this for a background and then draw some trees in front of it or surrounding it, but it gives you kind of a nice foliage effect. So you could have your fire reflected off of something. Next we have grainy flames. Now you could imagine maybe this is for a sun. So you could draw kind of a circular shape like this and then have it kind of build outward like that. Or you could have a bunch of tiny fires down on the ground and maybe you're looking at the fires from space. But it's just for little tiny little fire effects. The next brush is smoke. Now this brush uses your foreground and your background color. So I'll want to choose a lighter gray with a little bit of warmth in it, and then a darker gray with a little bit of warmth in it. If I paint a stroke, get those two colors kind of blended together. And all you need to do is just pull down toward your fire source. Of course, I'm making this really bright. I can have it build up like so if I want to, or I could choose colors that are darker, and I could have it be a bit more subtle gives you a really nice smoky effect. And you could of course use it for fog or smoke that's kind of collecting on the ground as well. Moving on to the next brush, we have Smoky Fire. Now this brush can also use two colors. So again, I'll want to choose kind of a warm smoky color, but the other color I choose is going to be brighter. This brush will mix the fire and the smoke together at the same time. So I can get something kind of like this where there's some smoke in the fire. And if I wanted to, I could make that smoke a brighter color. And it could look more like that. And again, if you choose a really bright color, it's going to build up faster. If you choose a darker orange, it's going to build up more slowly. So you might get a different effect that way. The next brush is called Soft Fire. Now, our fire doesn't always have to be orange. It could be green or any other kind of magical color. And we can build it up the same way, just building up strokes like this. Now this fire has a softer edge to it compared to the other fire brush. That's why it's called soft fire. And of course you can have it glow as you build it up. We could even try blue fire if we want to. The next brush is spongy fire. Let's go back to a fiery color here. I'm gonna build up strokes with this. And I get kind of an interesting wavy effect with my fire. So you might pull out strokes like this. This could be fire reflected onto something, or it could just be individual little fires if you do kind of smaller clusters. You may want to make your brush bigger if you want your fire to be bigger, and then you can get some stuff that's kind of like this. And you can, of course, combine the two, and you can have kind of multi-layered fire like this. And the final brush in this set is called Tinder, and this is a little bits of stuff that you would use to ignite a fire. So we could put some down like that. Maybe this is going to be a campfire at night. We could go to the embers brush, put in a few embers here and there so we can see that this is starting to ignite. 
And we could go to our fire brush. We could pull a little bit of fire up here. And of course, we'd want some smoky fire. A little bit of smoke there. Then we'll have the other smoke brush. We'll want to change our color a bit. Have some smoke kind of come off of it like that. We could even put in some background details with the forest fire brush. And maybe even the spongy fire. Then of course if you wanted to, you could go in and you could blend this stuff and you could use other brushes. You could do a digital painting like this, or you could paint this fire on top of photographs. So there you go, that's a demonstration of how to use my fire brush pack for Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. If you're interested in more brushes for Photoshop and Fresco, I'll link you to those in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.